What up, what up, what up? Welcome to another episode of 94 Feet with Coach JT. Right now, do me a favor. I know, man, it seems like I was just here, but I was off last week, man. Do me a favor. Leave a like in the comments. I need y'all to subscribe to this podcast, man, on YouTube, on all the podcast platforms. Let me know what you think. Please leave comments and just suggestions. Shout out. Holla at me. Let me know what you think if I'm doing good. Some stuff I got to add, man. I'm trying to really grow this thing locally and nationally, but also I enjoy doing this. So, again, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit a like button once or twice for your boy. Um, and appreciate you, man. First thing first, I got to get started, man. Uh, shout out to moms out there. Mom, I love you. I uh, hope you're doing better. I know you are. God is watching over our family. We're being tested in many ways right now, but we're still staying together. So all my family, though, man, I love all y'all. Stay strong, man, because um, family is everything to me and for us, man. I appreciate y'all. Um, this episode's for y'all, and it's going to be dope. No doubt about it. Um, 916, man, like y'all know, I'm putting on for the city. I really Sad. try. And uh, today I got another local one. Another local young man who's doing multiple things um, in the sports world and in the music industry. And we're going to get to that. And we're going to bring something to you for a first time live tonight. So y'all better stay tuned because everything is live, right? So this gentleman is a graduate of Franklin uh, High School. He also went to Sacramento State um, College after um graduate from Franklin he played four years of uh, soccer there then went on he has played in different cities countries different leagues um, he is a forward on the on the position of soccer plays uh, I'm sorry plays forward on the soccer field man which I know all about I played at middle center half back full back <laughs> everything but um but also this gentleman is multi-talented he's not just an athlete he's a music producer i'm sure he probably writes but his beats his beats has been coming up it's cold and we're gonna we're gonna preview some of these dope beats along with something else a little later but you gotta stay tuned so you don't miss this so i want to give a big shout out to chim mez right here chim man what's up man how you doing we good man appreciate, appreciate you for stopping by appreciate man you here. appreciate you stopping by bro i know you busy working you grinding trying to get other things on um just going for yourself right but also 94 feet basketball court picking up pressure but Let's get this thing started from the, the start of this because, I mean, soccer, man, you're, it takes a lot of work. Yeah. But outside of soccer, what else or was that the only sport you dibbled and dabbed in growing up as a young man coming from in Sacramento, man? Nah, man, like uh, first love was basketball. Okay. You know what I mean? I, I'd probably say when I was probably around like six years old, first dream going to the NBA. You know Facts. What I mean? <laughs> like I probably, I remember just having a little hoop my parents got me. Okay. You know, shooting on that thing. Uh, first dream that I really had, you know what I mean? I was like, okay, I'm going to do my thing, and I'm going to find a way. I'm going I'm to go play college basketball at Duke and go to the league. You wanted to go to Duke, huh? That, for, that was the up. first place I ever wanted to go. Bad, bad. First thing I could remember, like, when I was a little kid. Okay, going to Duke. So, in the in the basketball world, I know you put hours in soccer anyway, too, but in hoop, how much, you know, people, you train now constantly, but back then, I'm not saying, actually, how old are you? Let me let everybody know, or myself, how old yeah, are you right now? No, I just turned 29 in November. So you just, you're on, the, you're on that cusp, right? So yeah. given the time frame, things have been different. Um, how much time in the hoop world, thinking that I want to be a basketball player professionally, did you put in on your craft back then? I definitely put in a lot of work, but you know, when I think about it now, like, you know, I wasn't, you know, I felt like. I was definitely putting that work in, yeah. but at the same time, I didn't know what it took. Okay. You know what I mean? Bet. I felt like didn't really have like the mentors that I didn't, I didn't know anybody playing pro ball, didn't know anything like that. Right. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, I really enjoyed it. I'd be doing all my drills, but as I look back on it now, I was not going to the league. Yeah. <laughs> <You know what laughs> hey, but it's, it's all, it's all about, uh, yeah. you know, th that as a young buck, man, we had those, those dreams, but also, um. Give me a little bit about just the upbringing and where part of town you grew up in, man. Because, I mean, as you, Sacramento is not the same now as it was yep. 10, 15, 20 years ago. So. Nah, yes, sir, man. Well, yeah, first of all, man, you know, I'm born to Nigerian parents. Oh, nice. Uh, they came probably, like, early 90s, right, like a year before I was born. You know, just uh, growing up in a Nigerian household, something that they push is education, yeah. education, education. Yeah, yes, sir. You already know, man. Yeah. Like, And at the same time, I was not the best at it. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, I'd be... You know, I'd get average grades, but, you know, average and that's, it wasn't good. You know what I mean? Facts. Like, because, you know, a lot of our parents, they came from nothing. You right. know what I mean? Like, they came here for opportunities. First timers, so, right? Exactly. First time. Exactly. You know what I mean? So we really had an opportunity to, you know, to come in and really kind of change the trajectory of where we're trying to go. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and being that it could be a difficult transition for them, but also for you, um, learning-wise, what type of adversities, though, did you hit early on? 
any major ones adjustments that you may want to talk about I mean you can just like okay this, this was difficult for me at the time or this is what I may struggle with because now as we know there's a lot more of and we'll be in, in specific um, Nigerian students people in Sacramento yep. or some are young maybe going through the same thing so now if we can enlighten them on some stuff they may see or having to overcome could you just share a couple things that maybe struggle yeah, with no, most definitely man like when I think about it like growing up you know being first generation Nigerian mm-hmm. but also being born and raised in Sacramento um, it's you know two different cultures you know what I mean right. but at the same time I'm being raised by my Nigerian side but I'm also being raised by being African American you know what I mean like True. a good reference will kind of be like you remember in Black Panther when um, what's it called uh, um, when Chadwick Boseman you know what I mean he was mm-hmm. on that side while Michael yeah. B. Jordan was on this side it's, right. I felt like it was that exa- exact same kind of thing it's kind of like a little clash a little bit Yeah. Um, just because you know we're being raised by two different sides but okay you know what I mean? It's like, how, which way do How I do you go? maneuver, right? Because exactly. Because if, like I said, the, the cousin, was he the cousin? Uh, that He was the, the cousin, right? But Yep, it was his dad. It was his dad's brother who ended up moving to Oakland. Right. But his dad ended up staying in, uh, or his brother so, ended up staying yeah. in. Yeah, uh, so it's like, how do you do both things? Two different lives, but then similar backgrounds. How do you maneuver? Or which one do you, which one is it? Which one is exactly. the one you go by, man? Um, as far as, as you, as you make it through growing up a little bit, as far as getting to middle school and high school, did you find your niche or actually, I mean, when did you start switch the the ball? Because basketball was this, but then when did you try to go with the other ball? The ball you couldn't touch nah. with your hands. <laughs> you know what, man? I played both probably since I was like six. Okay. Yeah, I, like I played basketball all the way until my senior year. Nice. Um, yeah, I played. You know, I want to say, let's see. Like there was a point where I had to make a decision which one was I going to go for. As we know, right? If you yeah. want to go collegiately. Um, how hard was that? Because that's a tough decision in, in its own, especially if you know early on you have an opportunity to play one or the other. How hard was that to, like, put one down? It wasn't too hard to put down, but, you know, like, I was looking at it in a sense of, like, which one do I have a better opportunity to go pro in? Mm. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm 6'5", I'm black, I'm athletic, mm-hmm. I have this skill set that is going to continue to develop, and, like, with the skill set that I already have, I was like, if I continue to work on this, I could really make some noise here. Yeah. While in basketball, I felt like, you know, it's a lot of six. There, it's there, potentially at that level. A lot of six five guys who were athletic and exactly. Yeah. You know um, what I mean? So growing up, being that you're playing dual sports, I mean, we're you can tell multi sport yourself. What are some of the people you looked up to as far as mimicking your game after in basketball and soccer? Especially, I want to hear the soccer one too. Just so I know. In soccer, definitely like Didier Drogba, Thierry Henry, Drogba. Uh, Lukaku. Oh yeah. In basketball, man, I felt like you know, like a lot of us growing up. Usually the tallest guy on the team was what, like six six tops. Right. Yeah. So you know it was a lot of athletic guys, but nice. some of us may have to play the four, the five. Right. So it's like I really didn't have that guard skill set anyway. But I was just like the hustler. Okay. Um. You know I I do the dirty work at the same time. I you know. But I, playing soccer for me, also playing soccer, it made doing that part easier because it's always contact in soccer. Yep. I'm always bodying. Some, you're always bodying somebody. It's like so that was that was second nature. That's that's what's up. Um. Were you a big FIFA kid back then growing up? Oh yeah. And I, was, I even when it first round when <laughs> I was doing high school, we used to get on the on the sticks, but we had the, the old school where you had to plug in two to, to get six people on with cords everywhere oh, and play yep. FIFA with everybody <laughs> on the court, bro. So it was that serious. But um, that's dope, man. So through high school, once you make this adjustment, though, bro, and really say, okay, I'm this soccer is potentially gonna get me a scholarship or somewhere to college. Actually, initially through college, man. What your senior year in high school was it? As you know now, kids be getting offered yep. early on. What did you have on the table for yourself at that time as you get ready to make this transition? Was it something for sure? Were you signed early or anything? Nah, like? man, a lot of faith. <laughs> that's what. That's all I really had. Mm. Like, uh, I would say that, you know, I remember, I think Chico State may have been looking at me a little bit, um, okay. a D2. I remember I played well in one tournament. University of San Francisco has some okay. interest. Um, but I ended up going to a camp at USF, didn't show well, so, you know, mm. they didn't offer me anything. Um, didn't have any, like, I was didn't have any offers in either sport, until, or I had, a, I had a basketball offer later on um, at Sonoma State, so that was something oh. to look at. Yeah, that was, that'd, yeah. That'd, that'd be, I mean, it would have yeah. been like low radar, but it's like, hey, it's it was a, it's no, offer, it was a, right? It was an opportunity, man, yeah. I think it would have been dope regardless, but... Yeah. Um, there was like you know I had like a cousin who played for Sac State. I okay. remember even just like being in youth soccer. I'd be like a ball boy at the Sac State games okay. while my cousin was playing. Um, what else? I'm, one of my old uh, club coaches as well. He was a uh, he played at Sac State. So okay. you know he connected me in there, brought me in. You know I met the coaches. Um, they invited me. They brought me into the camp. 
I showed well enough in the camp for them to want to bring me in Dope. for uh, preseason training. As soon as they said that, in my mind, I said, I'm on the team already. That's that's what okay. I said. I didn't know that I was coming in as a walk on. I just thought, just, oh, uh, I thought they already gave me a spot. So you know, I come in, I come prepared, I do my thing. That's a whole nother monster. A whole, you know, the you funny gotta thing. You got to earn the stripes. I had to earn it, and I earned it, but I thought I already had it. You know what I mean? So, so let me ask you this point, because I mean, I was did same similar thing to my Division One school too, but it it takes two or three, four or five more times the effort and sacrifice to do, be a walk on. Yeah. But then oh, actually facts. get to get any minutes. I don't even care if it's one or 10 mm -hmm. or whatever to get any minute um, initially after you already thought you had to, you got that self check like oh wait I gotta do this again what were your thoughts in your head saying okay um, Jim you really gotta grind for this was it I'm gonna attack it head on was it kind of any doubt in your mind or I had no mind? doubt I like so I thought I already I thought I was already on the team the okay. second that they told me like yo we gonna give you an opportunity I okay. was like oh I'm here you know what I mean and not even being cocky or anything like that you know they gave me like the, the workout booklet they yeah. gave me everything that I needed I did every single workout in that book. I made sure I was coming into shape. I made sure I was hitting all my fitness times, all of that. I was doing all the extra work. So, you know, when I came in, I felt prepared. That's, hey, okay, that's, that's what's up, man. Yeah. So you get to you get to the next level. Yep. What are some of the biggest, just give me two or three things that you figured from high school that either you had to, to get to college and be effective and play, one, get on the, on the field, but get minutes that you had to bring to the table that you had to either enhance or get better at in your game of soccer? Um, I definitely say... You can't just you can't you you got to do the extra work. Okay. You know what I mean? Like if you can't be satisfied with just doing what you do at practice mm. at all, especially if you're a walk on. Like if you're a walk on, like you already have a chip on your shoulder, you have to prove it to yourself every day because at the end of the day, you're gonna you may start doubting yourself when you start seeing like oh like there's a bunch of scholarship athletes out here. I don't got a scholarship. I feel a little inferior to these guys. You know mm. what I mean? So um, love them all, my brothers. But at the same time, I was just like man, like. You know, I, I felt a way, you know what I mean? Like, walking around campus, hearing everybody talking about their scholarships, and mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, I'm over here. Busting my butt. I'm busting my ass. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a walk-on, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and there's never any disrespect to walk-ons. It just means you got to be a little grittier. You got to work yeah. harder and really try to earn. You got to earn that of spot. Um, at some point, did you earn that scholarship? Yeah. towards the, You know the funny thing, man? I got cut my sophomore year. Yeah. Okay. I got I, I got I got cut my sophomore season devastated. Mm. You know what I mean? Um I could have maybe quit. I could have trans, you know what I mean? If I would have listened to what a lot of people said, man, mm -hmm. my career would have been over like 10 years ago. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um or uh I'm tr like so after I got cut, you know, uh, a lot of close friends, you know, they they stayed tapped. like I was living with my teammates and shit like yeah. that too. You know what yeah, I mean? So that shit hurt. Cuz especially you know after your mean? first year already. Yep. Community team, family, I'm on it, right? Didn't have to register. I'm to getting playing time. That. Yep. That's a, oh, that shit. That's hurt. a big. So and we, on here, I always talk about those losses, right, or struggles. How did you overcome or maintain to stick with it? You start, you start talking about your teammates. Though. Was there anybody outside of your teammates that kind of was like a lifeline for you? Because you could have made a one choice to go. No, nah, I'm, I'm done and throw it in the towel. Yeah. Um. Anybody outside that circle that pushed that helped put you on or make sure you're like, nah, stick with the kid. Man, a lot, a lot of my team, because you know I still lived with them. You know what I mean? The, so the, that circle like, was still there. I was, I came in in college at 17, so young. If I, I had that red shirt anyway, you know uh -huh. what I mean? It wasn't gonna affect me. Right. And you know, looking back on it, it was the perfect opportunity. That's what's up. And I gotta be closer to this. No, nah, you good. I'm you good? straight, man. Okay, you can cool. pick you up. It's all good. All right, bet. Um, but that's what's up, because I mean, like I said, well, that's even better. See, I mean, I went through some, something similar as far as having to come out and walk on, but it's like. And you can't look for the handouts being a walk on, Absolutely but not. we also see what everybody else is doing and getting them. Like, I got to be better than the rest. I just want to be notified or get the notice. Like, okay, this dude is busting that y'all butts, or he's just giving extra effort because um, you want that reward. So I know I remember my 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 initial when they told me coach called me in the room before it was all on, on Instagram. Like, you get a scholarship before they hyped it up like that. It was just teammates and coach. Yep. What was your initial? Emotion or feeling to get the scholarship, get your school paid nah, for. It, it felt great, man. Just because I know where I started at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was a, it was a long time coming. I didn't really get it until my like last two, maybe even my last one, man. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But you know, regardless of all that, man, I found a way, and uh, you know that faith and drive that I had from the very beginning, just yeah. you know, carries on to this day, and it gave me some opportunities to you know play professionally as well. Yeah. So let me ask about the family, parents at, at that time. Mm -hmm. You tell them your vision, your dream, what you're gonna do. Yep. What was the response uh, going into that? You know what, man? Like that. Like I love my family for it because they always supported That's anything dope. that I, you know, like anything. Dope. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, never really doubted me. Just always just said like, yo, like. 
go ahead, man. That's Just nice. do your thing. They never try to be like, don't do that, don't do that. Yeah. So, okay, that's what's up. Get through. Uh, what did you major in college over there? Uh, communications. Communications, that's yep. what's up. So, um, being a student athlete, mm-hmm. like you said, is always in the household. Bet you that. And I always ask my, my college uh, guests who were here, finishing college, though. Yep. Um, finished college? Yeah, I did. Okay. Rewarding. Getting that degree, getting the scholarship for moms. I know both are for parents. It's like, which one was probably the biggest one for you? Man, you know what, man? To be honest, I wasn't. Like I didn't really care too much about the degree. Yeah. At at you at know, that time, t- yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it just like well, okay. Sorry. Well, for them though, what do you think you oh. meant to them? What? Right. <laughs> <laughs> everything. Right. Oh yeah, man. They the the degree is everything to them. Right. Yeah. Absolutely everything. Dope, dope. That that's rewarding. Like I said, that's mostly for the parents. Like I said, any of y'all students out there listening, watching, handle your business. Get that paperwork for your parents because yeah. they're going through it with you. You know what I'm saying? They're sacrificing a lot for you guys to get there. So get that paperwork for your parents. Um, man, now you get. A, as they say now, pro or get get a job, a contract after college initially. What was that process like? Because everybody's story is different. If oh, you're not a top man. of lottery or something like that, what was that like, man? How stressful or how low did it get for you or how high? Like, I mean, just tell me about that process trying Ooh. to get a job. Man, you know what? So my senior season, things are starting to click. You know, okay. I'm scoring goals, playing well. Um the dream that I had, uh, you know, getting drafted that started cooking up my freshman year of college. And, you know, the the dream came from seeing two players on Sac State when we actually get, get drafted. Okay. Yeah, I, so they, you got, got to, I got to see it. Got I, to see they, it. they got drafted um, in 2010. So I was like, you know, maybe at the end of my time, there's a, like it could happen. You yeah. know what I mean? I, so, you know, I got cut. That was a little setback there. You know, we fast forward. I end up going through it. Um, I have that good season. Um, the MLS combines coming up I don't get an invite mm. I'm devastated I'm like alright whatever um, next thing you know I'm in a I get an email from the San Jose Earthquakes they're having like a private combine for Dope. a lot of the local talent and all the different colleges cool um, it's a two day two day combine I kill it opportunity you know, I, I kill it shut it down I'm like yo like I think I I think I did something for myself here but at the same time you don't know nobody, right. nobody came up to me nobody said anything they're just like you just gotta stay prepared and uh, cool. you know when the time comes it comes um, you know fast forward a few weeks the day of the draft the first day it's the first and second round the second day it was uh, the second and third mm-hmm. or the third and the fourth um, you know I'm, I'm with my trainers and a whole bunch of other players uh, you know uh, other pros other college athletes pursuing nice. you know their careers as yeah. well then you know my agent you know i'm talking with him he's talking about something in um i think first division sweden at the time and also okay. a, a second division opportunity with the new team at the time in uh, louisville okay um so you know we, we're talking about all that next thing you know i'm at training i go check my phone because the draft's going on mm-hmm. i'm not paying attention to it you know my agent's blowing me up i'm like mm, that's a good like, thing I'm, I'm i'm thinking nothing of it you okay. know what i mean um, I call him. He, I was like, "Yo, what's good?" He's like, "Yo, you see the news?" I was like, "What you talking about?" He said, "You just got drafted to the Earthquakes in the third round." I was like, "You fucking kidding me?" <laughs> That's crazy. I was like, absolutely, like no way. You know what I mean? I'm seeing my phone. Phone's going crazy. I'm seeing all that. Um, yeah. You know, my college coaches are hitting me up. Uh, all my teammates, they hear me on the phone, like getting hella excited. Yeah. Um, phone's going. You, you already know that process, man. right? Yeah. Yeah. That pro- like it was crazy. I called my dad. I was like, "Yo, look at the news." You know. <laughs> Look at the news. Hey, my name got called Pops. Yeah. And I even I was like, hey, yo, look at the news. (laughs) Type type my name in on Google. That's crazy. Then uh, I was like, yo, dad, I just got drafted to the earthquakes. And earthquake is where? uh, San Jose. San Jose. Yeah. Wow. So um, I think I was like the number 66 pick. Yeah, I think I seen that. that. I'll do a little research. I seen that 66. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, like. But then you, you, you there. Yep. But then what's the next step? Oh, so you know, I'm there doing all these, uh, you know, news interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, really enjoying it. You know what I mean? Um, not being cocky or nothing. You know, being humble, just knowing, oh, it's a great opportunity. I got right. drafted. Um, but you know, one thing, it's not guaranteed yeah. at all. You know, I came in. Um, I was there for about three weeks in preseason. Mm-hmm. And got laid off in preseason camp. Mm. You know, that high came right back down. Quick turnaround, yeah. too. Yeah, but at the same time, I already felt that pressure before because I got cut from my college team. So the, it's You've nothing. been there. The experience is now. Now it's just another way another way you're writing your story, bro. Exactly. Adding to your story. Yeah. Um, so you get cut. What's yep. your first initial mindset again? Um, you know, when I get cut, 
I just go right back to the drawing board. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I let my uh, college coach know the situation. I, okay. I got cut. I let my agent. My agent already knows. Um, you know, reaching out to other people that I can possibly, you know, get into a camp with. Yeah. You know, I get a second division opportunity to go to um, where was it at the time? I want to say it was the Charlotte. Charlotte. I think it was Charlotte Impact. Dope. So you know, I'm out there. I'm doing my thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm for sure gonna get this one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not like I'm, I'm playing well. Stick, I feel comfortable. Right? You know what I mean? I saw what the highest level was like. I felt like I did well. I felt like I could have, right? You know, I felt like I could have continued to uh, go on, but you know, it, sometimes it just don't work out like that. Yeah. Um, I'm with Charlotte for about a week. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, they tell me they're not gonna sign me. Mm -hmm. Am I hella sad? Am I crying and shit? Not really, but I was like, nah, like, I was just like, man, like, like. Fuck this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, I kept the grind going. Um, another minor league team, Kitsap Pumas, reached out to me and told me they just wanted to sign me off the rip. So I was like, all right, bet I'm going to take this. Yeah, start yep. somewhere. Um, I get over there. I'm like, all right, let me do my thing. I'm a, you know, I'm going to kill it here mm -hmm. so I can just continue to climb up. Yes. I saw what the highest was like now. You know, I'm going a little down in the ranks after but, having this, this high. Yeah. Barely get playing time that season. You know what I mean? Like, I just got drafted. Now I'm playing in the third division yeah. team. Um, not getting much playing time, but, you know, still being a team guy, making sure that I'm not being cocky because I got drafted. You know what right. I mean? I'm making sure that, like, yo, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to work hard for Best. this. Yep. Yeah, that's what's up. That's Next thing you know, the following year, don't go back there. I go up down another league to <laughs> Sat Gold. I'm, I'm mad. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm mad, but in the sense of, like, like, this ain't what I had in plans for my professional career, you know what I mean? Understood. Um, so, you know, we end up we ha end up having a good season, but, at, like, I'm not I'm not a fan of where I'm at at right. that moment. Um, so I reach out to a friend, his, Ramon Martin Del Campo. Um, he played at UC Davis. Nice. And, uh, it's good to he, know people. No, nah, exactly, man. Like, he ended up having a gig in Costa Rica. So I, had, I was like, yo, man, you got, like, you know, any agents that I could reach out to mm -hmm. connect me with the guy? He got me out to Costa Rica in 10 days with a second division team, and I worked my way up over there. That's what's up, man. So just that alone, just your your your, your, characteris your characteristics of yourself, your character yep. um, of how you are, how you handle things, the adversity, right? That's a lot of adversity for somebody who has the dreams of getting a goal, and then it's just every time it seems like being knocked off. But the consistency is key. Yep. The consistency, staying steady, staying within your soul, but also using that as some type of motivation, but also relationships, right? Yep. It's good to always have relationships or develop them with people. You never know when you might pick up that phone. Hey, man. Exactly, I, man. Can you make a call for me? That could be the one that gets you the gig, man. Um, how long overall right now have you been playing pro, pro ball? Man, you know, I'm free agent right now. Okay. Not not officially retired yet, man. So okay. if we could, you know, make it happen a little bit more, a little longer. That's for sure. Um, but let's see. From uh, 20, 2015 to about, man, about six, seven years, man. Okay. Hey, yeah. that's, hey some people's career, the lifespan, I say, is only two to three. No, I'm so, saying. I mean, you already defying odds, but that's that's what's up, man. And uh, um, just shout out to you for being consistent, hardworking. Um, before you transition to this, this this other business venue that you're doing now, the other thing you're doing, man, I want to shout out to any of those, all the sponsors, man. I can't name them all, but I'm going to do my best name a few, yeah. though. But also, you guys follow... Um, our, our place on IG, man. New venue spot down in OSAC. Our place. Um, shout out to Smart Athletic Kids. Um, Clutch Clutch Clothing. Just everybody, man. It's, it's so many of you guys. Um, that elite photo booth. Just people that are just locked into the podcast, man. Um, and shout out to all the educators out there, too. It, it's a tough time through this COVID, man. So I want to give a shout out to all the teachers, principals, admin staff, anybody. Um, aides, campus monitors. Um, just everybody on school who help a school will run because you're being tested and pushed uh, above limits and you should be just show some love and show gratitude man so i want to shout out to everybody in the school systems um this music thing bro yep. this is the beats already <laughs> offline we already got a couple going man yeah. um what got you into in, into the music party uh what pushed that has that always been a love of yours or yeah. where that come from yeah so uh you know, I remember, you know, messing around, downloading FL Studio way, mm -hmm. way back in the day, not really knowing what I'm doing. Uh, you know, probably messed around with the demo for a second, never touched it again for years. It wasn't until, uh, let me see, the end of college, the homie uh, Nick Taylor, uh, his rap name at the time was Kid Swag. Okay. Had a nice buzz around Sac State. Um, he invited me to the studio with the homie Amar. 
Um, he had his other producer in there, Hollis. I remember his mom's was in there. A couple of homies was in there. We just having a good time. Right. And you know, I'm seeing that whole creative process. Like, you know, no lyrics are there. No lyrics. No no beats yet. But the producer makes a beat live. Right. I'm watching it. I'm just in awe. Like, Tap yo, in, like, right? I'm like, yo, you just this just came out of nowhere. I'm watching Nick Wright. Yep. I'm seeing like the whole situation come out. Dope. That's when I knew like one day I'm eventually gonna get into, um, you know, music Dope. production. But that's what's up. I want. It wasn't until like my first year of professional soccer that I realized, like, yo, we have a lot of extra time. So uh, with that yeah. time, you know, I'm going on YouTube. Um, you know, I'm learning about the equipment. Yeah. I finally pick up a keyboard and I just start, you know, learning a little. It's, it was a new language. You know what I mean? Any aspirations off top? Once you start to get the hang of it, what's on your mind then? What are you thinking? Nah, off rip, man. I, I thought I was gonna make a hundred bands maybe the first week. <laughs> <laughs> Not realistic yeah. at all, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember, I remember plugging in my beat machine and like uh -huh. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where the sounds were. I didn't know how to right. connect it. I didn't know how to turn it on. Yeah. Um. I was like, oh, Metro Boomin make this look easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? The and stuff we don't see, right? The, the unseen hours oh, we don't see, right? Definitely, crazy. the unseen hours we don't see, definitely dope. Um, that's crazy. So once you lock, get locked into kind of seeing who uh. Some of the music, like I know, like Zaytoven, yep. something like that. Oh, them Zaytoven videos and Ryan Leslie videos, right? YouTube Metro is crazy. Cook up videos. Yeah. I was watching everybody making beats on. Like that's what I'd be doing uh, using right. my free time. Nice. Uh, my first pro season. That's what's up. So right now I'm actually crack open this laptop real quick. On live on set. Oh yeah. We're just gonna play a few real quick before we get to the next. Cause I got we got some special for y'all today, man. But I'm gonna we're gonna play a couple samples for you. But then we're gonna do something for the first time on the show, man. So y'all gotta get ready for this, man. Stay locked okay, in. But right man. now we're gonna. I don't know. Just just give us a couple things, man. Off there, couple couple seconds, a couple tracks that you that you can show once you get ready to go. But uh, you guys, where can they find you at right now? Are you looking for that? Tell me where they can find you on on your socials and everything like yeah. that. Where they can find anything you got going right now? Yeah. So my Instagram is. Chim Chilla 92 uh, C-H-I-M C-H-I-L-L-A 92 uh, Same thing with my Twitter uh, All my beats are available on ChimChillaBeats.com Yeah, yeah um, You know, I started a campaign called Keep Your Chim Up Fridays Where I drop a new beat every single Friday oh. We're currently at week 219 220's point coming up this upcoming Friday um, so yeah, my, yeah, the beats are out there. You know, we working with a whole bunch of different artists. So, like you said, we got a special guest coming pretty soon, man. I hope y'all enjoy it. Too. Yeah, well, he getting getting that loaded up if it's good, it ready. But yeah. just y'all, Sacramento, right? Just local, like uh, support local, but also, man, the gentleman is out here making moves. Um, y'all can see also in the camera we got the we got the uh, Chimchilla. Some chinchilla yes, uh, fitted caps. Are, they, are these the, what are these oh, called? The, the, the uh, truckers. Not the truckers. I'm sorry, the yes, truckers. Sir. The snap back. The truckers. You got a couple here, man. Support the support the young gentleman, man, in his journey. But also for all you music junkies out there, I know a lot of people into the music beats. Hey, he, he got some fire with him. Try to give you a couple samples right now, and then we will have somebody come here and bless us with yes, something sir. that I know we're just gonna rock out for the first time live. Though, like I said, this is unscripted, unrehearsed, man. We just get into it live. So I'm looking at my the other guest over. He getting in the zone right now. He ready. Oh, he, he getting yeah. ready to go. So. Um, no. As, as Tim, we're gonna give a couple samples right here for you guys, man, and just um, just just hear what he got going, man. So you can just if, I don't know if it's a title to it or whatever, you just can yeah, you play just the track, man. Just play, some play a couple tracks, man. Yeah, All let's right. just let's just vibe out real quick for a minute. You're hearing it live right now, man. 94 Fever Coach JT, Chim Beats, man. Just local local guy. If you're looking for a beat, hit the young man. Definitely dope, man. Spring and summertime vibe right here. <laughs> As you look for something else, man, what do you what do you look for in making beats, or what kind of what, what's the feel or vibe you going for? Uh, you know, like really never know, man. You know what I mean? It's just like it just happens in the moment. If I hear a sample that I'm really messing with, we gonna try to flip it. If I play something on the keys that I'm vibing with, then we gonna build off of that. It just, you know, it just building off of whatever I catch inspiration off of. Dope. Mm -hmm. Let me see what else you got, bro. My man got, got hey, you talk about people with beat, like, you gotta have a catalog. I'm looking at his computer right now, he got oh, a man, catalog. Lie, man. This, this, <laughs> he got a this catalog. This is a collab I did with the homie, The Cinco. Okay, um, The Cinco. Shout yeah. out to The Cinco, man. Yes, sir. Shout out my brother, man. We just here to put everybody on 916, man. That's all we're here for. Okay. 
laid back. All right, so it's that time. We're gonna bring. Oh, we got yeah. a special guest in the building. I'm Let's gonna let you introduce, introduce the uh, artist, man. Tell us a bit about the, the gentleman where he's from as he comes around here, yep. get set in because uh, yeah, we finna do something. Like I said, first time on the show live, man. So go ahead, just introduce yes, your boy yeah. as he gets set in here, man. This my dog Joe Gidry. Joe, Shannon, Shannon. known as Joe. Shannon. Man, it's been it's been my dog for a long time, okay. man. Through high school, through sports, through True Grit, and that's everything, right. man. And you know, we've been working on a lot of stuff together. He's an amazing R and B singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, my boy? Joe, Yo. Joe, Joe, I appreciate you stopping in, man. Thanks for coming in uh, and, and blessing us with this with this first time. Like I said, man, you the first one live on the show. That's gonna come give us. But actually, Joe, give us a little background. We talked offline. Where you from? Where you grew up? A little bit about okay. that. Yeah, what's going on, man? This is Joe. It's spelled J E A U X. Not be, not to be confused with Jeeks, Jocks, Jukes, but Joe. <laughs> You know, uh, Joe, yes, sir. I come to y'all from Sacramento by way of New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, again, former athlete, just like bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we pushing this real R and B. Uh, my brother Tim, right here. You know what I mean? We been doing it for a minute. You know, we just we we trans transition from sports to this music, and yeah. we're doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Right now, we got something coming. It's called Only. You know, I got a campaign called Just Drop Joe. You yeah. know what I mean? It's pretty much aimed at creatives. Yeah. Get out your head Just drop Don't overthink it Whatever you do It's gonna be dope So You know That's what we are so right where now where can they find you On the socials Joe Shout uh, them out right here Y'all can find Tap me in. ITS Underscore ITS J-E-A-U-X Again it's underscore I-T-S J-E-A-U-X Again the name is Joe So Y'all hearing it for like Since the first time on my show I'm doing this live The time it couldn't be better uh -huh. um, Unrehearsed Unscripted But also man Again we putting on For the, the local talented here Because now I'm letting everybody know y'all tap in with me. We can get in the studio here and get you on the air, get you to whatever you shine, but also do the interview, but have fun. And we finna vibe out right now. DJ Eddie, I know you in the back. Yeah. You ready? Shout out to DJ Eddie and Justin in the back, yeah, man. Getting the, everything DJ ready, man. Uh, studio's popping. Like I said, Chim came in, Joe said, man. They look inside. They was pleased with what they see, so the vibe is here. Uh, yeah, DJ, sure. whenever you're ready, man, we can drop the track, man, Let's, and, and let, let y'all get to work. <clears throat> this song is called Only. It's on the way. Produced by my dog, Chim Chilla. Yes, sir. No, 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 no. Yeah. Girl, you want this nighttime lusting, but you scared to fall. Saddle up and brace yourself, cause I'm gonna give it all. Okay, oh, lift it up. Fun on DD, don't want no interruptions. Joey casting over the artist's seduction. You can reach your peak if you follow instructions. Baby, just trust it, yeah. No. Put your tongue on my tongue, let's speak the same language. Uh -huh. Come star in this movie, I can make you famous. Kissing on your neck as you take off your necklace yeah. Now the only thing we got on, baby, is this Netflix Yeah, yeah Only thing we got on, baby, is this Netflix yeah. Now the only thing we got on Be my main actress We can make a movie, you ain't gotta yell action By the way you move it, I can tell you satisfaction Face deep in the pillows, got you up your lashes, uh, scratches on my neck and spine, cause you won't let me go, but the way that you keep talking, I can tell you want some more, that's crashing, I know it's been a minute since you had it, but you got my attentions, no distractions, and we on the same page with our actions, with our actions, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, uh, uh, and speak the same language. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come star in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that song's called Only. You know, the only thing we got on is Netflix. You know, produced by Tim Chiller Beats. It's our first time performing. And actually, we just made this like, what, three weeks ago? So, you know, we staying true to it, never new to it. Again, it's called Only. We dropped the reel last week. Only is on the way in a week and a half. So, it's love. Shout out to Joe. Chim on the beats, man. Hey, for the first time on the show for me right now, uh, that was a vibe, bro. Like that, that was solid. That was I solid. I appreciate it, the time, man. Um, Chim, appreciate you coming out. I don't know Eddie if it's me or if the echo I can hear it in my headphones. I don't know if it's coming through that way from the uh, track, but there we go. Yes, there sir. Go. There it is. Um, appreciate you. I'm a music junkie too, bro. I had to stop from just. I really wanted to go in with you, but <laughs> but hey, fire, bro. 
Again, y'all listen up. Look at it only. It's called only, man. Get in, get in touch with these young gentlemen. Get that track. Yeah, purchase soon. the track. It's coming. Well, it's coming soon, man. Y'all get it out there. Especially when we we post these videos, man. Y'all tag them in. I'm gonna tag them in. Y'all we post it, man. For, for us, for them. Let everybody know what's out there, bro. You got you got talent. Nah, I appreciate you got it, talent, bro. For my real, dude. For real. I appreciate you know what I'm it. Saying? So it's just about the grind and, st- and staying ten toes down with it. But um, and now you're here too, part of the interview. So this this last question that I'm gonna give is for both of y'all. So with every guest that come on the show, man, in basketball you got a triple threat, right? Dribble, pass, shoot. But I want you guys to give your triple threat just. For yourself or something you could give somebody else who may not know you, who's watching you, your triple threat in life. Though, what three things do you hang your hat on or your, your core values that you know you're going to stick with you from now to whenever, man? And, and Joe, I'm going to start with you, man. Give me three things that you're just going to always stay solid with, stay true to. I'm going to always stay true to me, one. Two, stay true to God. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> stay true to your people. I, my biggest thing out of those three, though, is, is God. Okay. At the end of the day, I'm a very religious person. I understand that nothing happens by osmosis. It's a reason for everything. The mm-hmm. ups and the downs all a part of the story. Totally. Uh, in this moment, I know young boys, we out here, we all got to grind. We all got something we chasing. Right. A lot of us strive to be a person. I, they strive to be that strong person. That strong person is already here. Everything that you're striving to be is already here. You just have to witness and know that that's who you already are. You, you have to go outside yourself to be that person that, oh, I'm strong. Uh, I can over, I'm can. i an overcomer. Yeah, you're all that already. Hmm. You just have to you have to make sure you know that's who you already are. Dope. It's gonna take time, but you already got it. So that's Yo, me. Powerful, you know I mean? powerful, yes, right sir. there. I mean, y'all let that sink in. You already, you, it's already in you. It's, it's already, already in you. you. Now you manifest it. How it comes out to play, but it, we all got it in somewhere in this right? For sure. Dope, Joe. Appreciate Dope. you, Tim. Yes, sir. Always got to be authentic. Mm-hmm. You got to treat every single person with respect, no matter you know how big or small they are. Okay. Like I think things always come around full circle. Okay. Um, and you know, just having faith. Like okay. I'm the same way Just You know I have very strong faith yeah. You gotta make sure You always just showing love Always praising God And just You know Always making sure You're just doing Doing right by it okay. So First time Y'all heard it first I'm 94 feet With Coach JT Man 94 feet All platforms Subscribe The YouTube Our podcast My first live Musical artist And producer On the show I don't know I, I enjoyed it Hope y'all did too man Because uh, be on the lookout For these young men Again so. Uh Shout out your socials one more time, Joe Slay. Make sure they know where you at. Underscore I T S J E A U X. It's not your average Joe, baby. There you go. Yes, Chim, give him yours one more time. And Chim Chilla 92. C H I M C H I L L A 92. Yes, Chim Chilla Beats. Hey, yep. man, they only getting started. Like I said, and, and, and now, like I said, for me, anybody who comes through here, for me, I stay true to we rocking. So if I can do anything to help y'all, Hit me, let me know if I blast that whatever's coming out. That's right. Other things coming to place. We had a release party, got a venue oh, already. Yeah. We had yes, a release, sir. whatever we can okay. do. You know what I'm saying? We're going to definitely link up to make sure we do right for each other and yep. support each other because that's what Likewise. we need to be doing. You feel me? Likewise. All right, man. Everybody enjoy the rest of y'all day. Have a good week. This is man from Joe to Chim to Coach yep. JT, 94 feet, man. Appreciate y'all. We out. Peace. Peace. Y'all. That's love. Appreciate you, my boy. Oh, man. Yes, Fire.